Good afternoon guys, Clutch Kicker Nation here. All right, so today's video, we're gonna do a quick adjustment on the ride height for the G35. I have officially scheduled my appointment for the alignment. The alignment is going to be getting done at, uh, what, I don't know, three, four o'clock on Tuesday. So basically I have to go through right now and finalize the ride height. So uh, even though the springs are gonna settle, I need to get the ride height as close to what I want as possible so that I can get it aligned. And then worst case scenario, a few weeks later, after the springs have settled, I can do a little another fine tune and take it back in and get checked. But basically I'm gonna go ahead and set my ride height uh, to where I want it right now. Uh, the vehicle's been sitting for a few days. I know I haven't really driven it, but hopefully they've settled a little bit. Either way, I need the ride height to be equal or at least where you know adjusted so it's not kind of all over the place because it the, you know there is some variances from corner to corner and all that stuff from my preliminary installation so we're going to go ahead and knock that out today so that tuesday i can drive the car up to the alignment shop get everything squared away because the alignment is royally messed up and then i will be able to start putting miles on it to break the clutch in which is what i am waiting for to dare drive the darn car i have waited weeks now just with my schedule and all the stuff i've been doing to finally drive the car and i miss it so just in case you're wanting to see it here she is just sitting there chilling waiting to be driven everything's good to go just waiting on alignment uh the drop looks great um, you know, I'm very happy with it. I have not had a chance to clean the garage up. If you're wondering, it's still a mess, but basically, um, I decided, uh, I originally wanted 27 inches. I'm going to go ahead and settle for, uh, 26 and a half because I, I've kind of really grown to like how low it is. Um, it's sitting right now about 26 and a quarter. So pretty much I'm just going to have to drop one corner a little bit and raise another corner a little bit and adjust to tweak the others. But yeah, so there she is. I'm going to go ahead and get started. All right, so for this process, the first thing you want to do is to get your measurements. Um, there's several ways to do this. Uh, TN in their manual suggests using um, halfway the center line of the wheel to the fender, and then they give you the measurement. It should be in their instruction manual that you compare it to and make your adjustments. Um, since I'm kind of just going off a of ground height, you know, I want from the ground to the fender arch, I want 26 and a half front and rear that gives me pretty much an inch and a half drop all the way around compared to the factory way i do from the ground to the fender arch um, you just take your measurements and write them down and then you start adjusting one thing to keep in mind is that sometimes you will have cross weight changes so your front left and your rear right kind of share a similar axis so if you increase the height on the front left your right rear may lower because you're controlling the weight of the vehicle and how it's distributed per corner it has to do with corner balancing and all that stuff um these aren't full shock height adjustable you you can kind of corner balance them and stuff it's just not really worth it so i'm just going to even out the ride height um the factory ride height was 28 inches from the ground to the fender arch so i'm doing 26 and a half that's an inch and a half drop uh it was even front and rear so i'm basically maintaining that so my first step was measuring i wrote them down on the notepad on my computer that i have in the garage so i have my start measurements and now I'm just going to pick a corner, adjust it, drop it, measure everything again, and proceed to continue on corner to corner until I'm happy with it. All right, to get started, first, after you've taken measurements, you're going to need some tools. You're going to need some coilover wrenches, a jack, a tape measure, hand tools, all, you know, all the normal things you should have because you just installed your coilovers. All right, so... Um, I took my measurement. I'm going to go ahead and jack up the driver front. I'm going to start there. It's the lowest. It's at um, basically 26 and a quarter. Um, so we're going to start with that. I'm going to raise it up until I get to 26 and a half. I'm going to drop it down and then I'm going to check all my measurements. <laughs> You're going to break these loose now if you have uh been they've been installed you may want to clean these with a nylon brush unless they're rusted and really bad then maybe a wire brush to get any debris out of the threads maybe some pb blaster but you're going to just break these coils loose or these collars loose and then you're going to screw this top one up to increase ride height or down to lower ride height um so we're going up so we're going to just spin it up a little bit and see what we can get All 
All right, now that we've spun it up a good bit, we don't have to worry about locking this down yet because we're gonna basically drop the car down, jar the suspension a little bit to try to get everything to settle, and then we're gonna retake our measurement and see how far or how close we are to what we want. We're shooting for 26 and a half. Basically, uh, 26 and a half, just a, just a hair above 26 and a half, which um, I'm not going for <laughs> laser precision here because, like I said, the springs still need to wear in, so they're going to sag a little bit. So um, we're talking less than a 1 16th of a, of a difference off of what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and lock it down there and set it at that. And then I will, that'll be good enough to get the alignment, drive the car, let the springs wear in for a month or so, retake my ride heights, make any adjustments, and get the alignment checked again. Now, um, on my wife's car, the springs did settle down uh, maybe an eighth inch or so after a, few, after a couple months. So I do expect the ride height to lower a little bit more as I drive the vehicle. So I'm good with less than 1 16th of an inch invariance. All right, so once you've reached your ride height, what you're gonna do is you're gonna tighten your bottom ring back up until it touches, and then you're gonna tighten them together to use them as a jam nut to lock your ride height. Uh, TN gives you this nice location here to put a torque wrench in here and use a torque wrench to tighten these. The torque specification provided by TN is 41.6, so basically 40 to 44 foot-pounds. So split the difference and say 42 foot-pounds. All right, so there the front driver's side wheel has been adjusted and it is locked. So now I will drop the car and then I will take all the other measurements to see if any have changed. All right, so I got the back passenger done. It is now 26 and a half and the front uh, driver's side is now 26 and a half. Uh, checking others, the rear driver has shifted up a um, 2 16th or 1 8th inch. So um, as you can see, there will be some changes. Uh, basically, after I lowered the vehicle, I bounced the car to try to get the suspension to settle back down. And I do that a couple times and then recheck measurements uh, to get a final uh, height of measurement. So yeah, I'm just, um, so far everything's going pretty smoothly. I didn't record on the rear passenger due to the space confinements, but I'm gonna try to show you basically how you do the rear now. First, it's easiest if you take the tire off. here so here's your spring perch and your collars and everything like that so you're gonna ha go ahead and loosen this and you're gonna spin your top collar in this case because everything's kind of upside down and what the front is you're gonna spin this up a little bit and then we need to lower this car so we're gonna spin this uh, collar actually up as well it's got to go down about a half inch so um, yeah so first we're gonna brake torque on this and then we're gonna spin this one up and then spin this one up to lower the vehicle down I'm trying to figure out a camera angle for you guys, so bear with me. All right, now that we've made some adjustments, we'll go ahead and lower or put the wheel back on and lower the vehicle down and see what we are measuring. All 
All right, so we're not quite there yet. We still got some more to drop. This is the tedious process. We'll jack the car back up, take the wheel back off, and keep making our adjustments. So as soon as I get this adjusted and get this corner done, all I'll have left is the front passenger side, which is the same as the front driver side. So I already showed you how to do that. So um, then after I do that side, all of it will be squared away. I'll be good to go to drive this thing to the alignment rack and everything. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and end this video here because there's no point in shooting footage of something I've already shown you and me just redoing it. I'm trying to keep this video short. So there you go. That's basically how you adjust your TN basis Z coilovers or any coilover that is not shock height adjustable. If you had a shock height adjustable coilover, you can message me or leave a comment in down below and I will explain how you would adjust that there's more settings you have to worry about you have to worry about spring preload and then um, your actual strut height adjustment shock height adjustment is different than your spring so there it's a little bit more complicated but i can walk you through or give you some pointers on how to adjust that type of suspension and later on i may do a video on that down the road quite a bit because that is the type of coilovers that is on my s13 if you uh, found this interesting and everything, just follow me along. I'll be having more videos like this about how to do random things on your vehicle. All right, guys, you have a good night, and thanks for watching.